from very low frequency to very high frequency. So if you just uh, remember, uh, if you know any idea about the frequency range, just take the different um, band of transmission, like uh, on which frequency the your TV television is working, on which frequency your satellites uh, signals are coming. So there are different uh, types of frequency or different uh, range of frequency. Okay, uh, what is the range? what is the frequency of uh, that audible voice signal? Do you know? Twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz. Yeah. yeah, twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz. But uh, if you consider the frequency which is uh, on which your mobile is working, so when we are uh, receiving this voice signal in the mobile, what will be the frequency that will be in the range of? Can you say what will be the uh, range of frequency? Whether it will be in the kilohertz or any other unit? It will be in gigahertz. Yeah, so you can imagine that uh, the same electronic devices we are using, but uh, how much frequency difference is there? Simply you are uh, just uh, transmitting the signal through a wired medium, just uh, like your uh, telephone. Earlier the telephone was uh, used, so the landline telephone and in your mobile phone. So there is a huge range of frequency which will be applied in electronic devices. So when we apply the low frequency, very low frequency when we're applying, obviously the reactance of that part will be 1 by 2 pi Fc. This will be the reactance. So if the frequency is very low frequency, low means usually we just uh, uh, approximately uh, let's say F tends to 0. In that case, your reactance will be 1 by 2 pi into 0 into C. So 1 by 0 is infinite. So infinite reactance means we just we just consider as the open circuit, open circuit. Okay. So wherever we use the low frequency signal, we uh, consider the reactance of that uh, electronic circuit as the infinite reactance. So in that case, that path can be open circuit. So that the effect of the capacitance is not. Uh, observe it will be not so much effective. But when we consider the high frequency, if frequency is very high, means frequency tends to infinite. In that case, your Xc will be 1 by infinite will be 0. So it will be a short circuit. So this is for only ideal case 0 and infinite we have considered. That means it indicates that when we consider the high frequency analysis, high frequency applications, in that case, in electronic devices, in PN junction also, some capacitive effects are observed. And that capacitance cannot be neglected. That's why we need to know uh, where, from where the capacitance is coming and uh, into picture and how much the capacitance, how it can be calculated. Okay. So in PN junction diode, in the diode, usually we have, we observe two type of capacitance. One is called as your transition capacitance. One is called as your transition capacitance, which is denoted as CT. And another is your diffusion capacitance. is denoted as CD. So for this uh, transition and diffusion capacitance is uh, just uh, let me show you that TPT. So here we can see that the transition capacitance and diffusion capacitance. Uh, okay. So for this transition capacitance is usually the transition capacitance it is observed in reverse bias condition. Actually both the capacitive effect is there in the output of in one condition, in reverse bias condition, one effect is dominating over the other. So simultaneously, we will not consider both the capacitance. So in forward bias condition, one capacitance will be coming to picture. In the second, uh, in the reverse bias condition, other capacitance will come into picture. So usually in the reverse bias junction, when we make the diode uh, in the junction reverse bias, so as all of you know that in the reverse bias condition, if you condition reverse bias of, of PN junction diode. So in that case, this PN junction diode, this is the uh, PN junction, so this is the junction. So when we make it reverse bias, let's say this is P side, this is the N side. When we make it 
reverse bias that means p side will be connected to negative terminal n side will be connected to positive terminal so just uh, one student was requesting for recording i forgot to record start record some students are involved in ncc they are not able to join the class uh, how many students such students are there Ma'am, uh, I usually uh, I am actually in NCC today is actually the morning class that's why I was able to join. Okay, sure. Okay. Just uh, before the class, uh, if you can remind whenever you miss the class, then it will be better. So it is usually it is skipped from mind. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So uh, so uh, so we will uh, discuss the transition capacitance in reverse biased condition and diffusion capacitance in forward biased condition. This will be in the reverse biased condition, and this will be in the forward biased condition. So when we discuss about the reverse bias of the junction, so P side will be connected to negative terminal, N side will be connected to positive terminal. So in reverse biasing condition, the width of the depletion layer will be more so the width of the depletion layer will be more so as we increase the reverse bias voltage this voltage if you increase automatically your uh, depletion layer width is also increasing so what is there actually in depletion layer in depletion layer in the uh, p side uncovered uh, which ion positive ion or negative ion in the reverse bias condition so in this negative region negative. yeah uncovered negative, negative ions negative. are there yeah uncovered, uncovered negative ions are there and in n side uncovered positive ions are there okay so in this in combining leave we can say this uh, pn junction the depletion layer is having a huge amount of uncovered charges okay which will be this region act as a dielectric medium dielectric medium or we can say it is the space charge region so here uncovered a uh, high concentration of uncovered charges are there so this is called this will act as just like the insulator where the conduction is not possible or dielectric medium and this p region and n region these are having low resistance path so it will be just like a parallel plate capacitor means one conducting plate another conducting plate and in between there the uh, insulating region is there so it is the parallel just uh, like a parallel plate capacitor so in case of this uh, reverse biasing the junction will behave like a capacitor so what will be the capacitance uh, in this region <clears throat> uh, net amount of capacitance that will be uh, appear in this uh, and this this uh, capacitance is called as your transition capacitance also it is called as your depletion region capacitance there are various terminology so this name is transition capacitance or it is called as depletion region capacitance or it is also called as your space charge capacitance it is denoted as ct so what will be the value of this ct if you vary the voltage if you vary the uh, applied reverse bias voltage in that case obviously the width of the depletion layer will again change and the um, amount of your stored charge that will also change so this transition capacitance of this capacitive effect or it is called as your incremental capacitance so the capacitance value will vary so it is defined as your ct is equal to uh, actually it is 
एज यूजल डी क्यू बाई टी भी दिस इज द ट्रांजिशन कैपेसिटेंस सो फिर द डी क्यू इज द इंक्रीज इन योर चार्ज ड्यू टू द इंक्रीज इन योर रिवर्स बायस वोल्टेज सो दिस विल बी स्टोर्ड एज द स्टोर चार्ज विल बी एपियर एज द ट्रांजिशन कैपेसिटेंस सो this also we can represent as we know i is equal to the current across the uh, across the uh, capacitor will be dq by dt so it can be uh, represented at dq by uh, dt that will be i and this will be dv by dt so here we can say this sorry i not i this is ct i dt by dv na ct ct so dq by dv is Yeah, you just divide dv and multiply dv, so this will be ct in, in uh, into dv by dt. So here we can relate this current and voltage. So this change in voltage will uh, also affect the change in uh, affect the current with depending upon the capacitance value also. This capacitance value will also uh, involved here. So this is called the transition capacitance, which is which is appear in the reverse bias condition. so this transition capacitance uh, okay next will be the diffusion capacitance so when we consider the forward biased condition so in forward forward Excuse biased condition yes uh, i mean the previous case you said the capacitance uh, increases because the uh, depletion region increases ma'am but uh, you said the depletion region is a dielectric medium so it the di dielectric medium decreases the like capacity no sorry sorry Uh, um, sorry, sorry, I, I miss it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So you people are more acquainted with this uh, capacitance voltage relation. You just come across this in twelve, so you will be more uh, confident about this. <laughs> okay. So in the next case, in the forward biased condition, uh, we will have the other capacitance that is called the diffusion capacitance. So this diffusion capacitance appears. diffusion capacitor that is your uh, cd diffusion capacitance so in diffusion capacitance or this is also called as your storage capacitance this diffusion capacitance is also terminology is your storage capacitance so in forward biased condition we know that the barrier potential is uh, or the barrier width is decreases with the increase in your pn junction voltage applied voltage forward biased voltage so in forward biased condition we will have this pn junction so this p type and n type junction so this will be uh when we apply the forward bias voltage pn and will vary the voltage so the depletion region width is going on decreasing whatever it is there it is going on decreasing okay and in forward bias condition as we know that in the p side the holes are the majority carrier and electrons are the minority carrier in the n side electrons are the majority carrier and holes are the minority carrier so as in the forward bias condition the majority carrier will cross the junction and minority carrier will remain in that side they will not cross the junction so here it is uh, actually in the uh, pn uh, in the forward biased condition the charge density near to the junction okay the charge density near to the junction is more and it will be decaying across the uh, distance so when we move from the junction towards this side the charge density is differing when uh, here the nearer the near to the junction the charge density is more okay so uh, this this change in your uh, charge concentration that will create a capacitive effect so according to the application of your uh, this forward biased voltage the and density of your charge will also change so this variation of density of your charge carrier from this uh, higher density to lower density or higher density to lower density in this side that will just 
appear as the some uh, uh, some we can say some charge is stored near to the junction so this will be just uh, this uh, create a capacitive effect that is called the diffusion capacitance diffusion capacitance means always diffusion what will come whenever the concentration gradient is there from there is a difference of concentration so obviously diffusion phenomenon is there so due to that whatever the capacitive effect is shown that is your called your diffusion capacitance so here the diffusion capacitance also uh, represented as this cd is equal to dq by dv so here the dq represents the change in the number of minority carrier stored outside the depletion region when the change in voltage across the diode is dv means the minority charge carrier they will not cross the junction but they will, they will be accumulated near to the junction so the density of minority carrier like in the p side the elect concentration of electrons near to the junction is more than the concentration here so likewise here the uh, end region the concentration of this force is more near to the junction ac according to your um, uh, when we move towards uh, away from the junction so this uh, due to this accumulation of minority charge carrier some charge will be stored near to the junction so this will create the diffusion capacitance so we can uh, we can uh, represent this diffusion capacitance as cd is equal to dv by dq and uh, what is this um, current due to this uh, i we can say this is your q by this uh, let's say tau okay what is this tau tau is the actually the mean leap time of the uh, lifetime of the charge carrier tau is the lifetime this is the mean lifetime of the charge carrier it's basically half life right yeah so we can represent this uh, i is equal to q by tau so also already we have the in the forward bias condition the diode current we have already one equation the diode current i is also your uh, i not into e to the power b by eta vt minus 1 this is the diode equation so we can have this uh, q is equal to i into tau so this i into tau so we can have this uh, tau i0 into this e to the power v by eta vt minus 1 so this can be appeared as this charge so according to this we can uh, you can have this uh, this e to the power v by eta vt is much more greater than 1 so e to the power v by eta vt this value is much more greater than 1 so with this assumption uh, with this assumption we can evaluate this so this will be tau i not e to the power v by eta vt okay so now we can find the uh, diffusion capacitance cd also which is dq by your dv so we can differentiate this equation so we can if you differentiate this part with respect to uh, v then uh, if you just solve it you will get tau into i plus i not by eta vt you just differentiate it we will get the diffusion capacitance like this so you can compute the diffusion capacitance if you have this value so will you please explain this diffusion capacitance also there diffusion capacitance means whenever we are uh, giving the forward bias to the junction so this forward bias uh, in the forward bias condition majority charge carrier will move across the junction but the minority charge carrier will not cross the junction they will be accumulated near to the junction so they uh, in the p side the uh, near to the junction the electrons concentration will be more uh, in comparison to your uh, when we move away from the junction the concentration gradient is there so the minority carrier concentration from the junction to away from the junction this will vary from higher to lower okay so this due to the concentration gradient so we just uh, assume that here some charges are stored so whenever there is a storage of charges there must be some capacitive effect so this capacitance is appeared due to the diffusion phenomenon diffusion means from the higher concentration to lower concentration if the gradient is there then that is the diffusion phenomenon so this capacitance is called as your diffusion capacitance 
so when we vary the uh, when we vary the voltage uh, forward biased voltage there also uh, we are supplying the more uh, amount of voltage so the depletion layer width is again decreasing okay so due to applied voltage also the charge we that will also vary so how this will vary that uh, equation we have just derived so this uh, will depend upon the value of your current also the reverse current also reverse saturation current and uh, your par parameter that is volt equivalent temperature and your eta value also and this tau value so what is the general value of this tau how much it uh, the value you just considered 26 millivolt 26 Which one? No, no sorry, VT, VT, VT. VT, VT. No tau, tau. I am asking the lifetime of the charge carrier. It will be uh, usually it is it is uh, given given parameter. You no need to remember this. Okay, so uh, here we can observe that the diffusion capacitance is directly proportional to the current. so when we increase the voltage uh, forward voltage obviously the current will also increase and as the current will increase the diffusion capacitance which also increase and if you compare the you know, transition capacitance and diffusion capacitance usually the diffusion capacitance uh, is higher value much more higher value than the, your transition capacitance so it is having a more dominating effect in the forward biased condition so this is about the So yeah, what has dominating presence in forward bias? Yes. What it is? I mean, can you repeat the point that you just mentioned? In forward bias oh. condition, uh, as we see, and uh, from this equation, it is shown that this uh, CD is directly proportional to your uh, forward current. So obviously, forward current is much more than your reverse current. Okay. Yes. So uh, higher values of current we are getting. So if you just uh, plot the graph of this, uh, sorry, uh, diffusion uh, the capacitance versus your uh, voltage applied voltage, then the graph is just like this. Just like your diode characteristics, the capacitance is in changing in this way. This is the. Uh, Uh, actually this capacitive effect this is exponentially increasing as the current is exponentially increasing in the forward biased condition the capacitance this is a voltage this is the capacitance net capacitance so in capacitance the forward biased this is the forward biased condition this is the reverse biased condition so in the forward biased condition the capacitance increases exponentially and very higher value in comparison to your uh, reverse biased capacitance that is the transition capacitance ct and this is your uh, cd so usually it is in the range of some uh, if you consider in pico farad so this uh, capacitance is very uh, like uh, less than 4 to 5 pico farad for as this uh, this will be very higher capacitance like 20 30 pico farad like that so this is about the capacitive effect of diode so next part we i think we have cover all the characteristics all these things of your diode so now we will switch over towards the application part of the diode so from the in the application part diode application we have <coughs> application of diode so in application of your diode normal pn junction diode we are saying here Gen when we apply the general diode the application will be different so in norm in norm pn junction diode if you just uh, take the application the very fast application which we usually use for diode is your rectifier okay this rectifier then another uh, application uh, applications are the wave shaping okay wave shaping wave shaping element or wave shaping circuit will be used for uh, application in the application of as application of diode so here the clipper circuit okay clipper circuit clamper circuit these are the application clipper means actually this uh, clipper clamper was earlier in your syllabus but, but now it is uh, it has removed um, but uh, you should know this clipper and clamper application how the diode is uh, 
clipping some part of the signal clamper how the clamper will shift the signal so that part little bit we will discuss because this part is removed but this is useful uh, for uh, your analysis point of view so in rectifier we will have two type of rectifier one is your half wave rectifier another is your full wave rectifier as you know what is the uh, what is the utility of rectifier so obviously rectifier means it will convert the rectifier means it will convert the ac signal into your dc signal isn't it rectification rectification means conversion of ac to dc so this is your rectification so uh, how it will convert the ac into dc so ac signal means obviously it is the alternating current so it will alternating in nature that means it is coming uh, from positive to negative it is changing or it will be uh, changed with a range of voltage so this is the alternating current so usually when we alternating current or alternating voltage we will discuss we just uh, consider the positive half cycle this is a negative half cycle positive half cycle negative half cycle this kind of signal okay so uh, as we are getting the source uh, that is in our home that is a 2 230 volt ac signal we are getting but uh, more of the appliances whatever we are using they operated in the dc voltage also like your mobile your mobile phone is operated in a particular uh, amount of dc voltage so how much charge is required for your mobile phone if you ever marked in your uh, 11 charge, volt 11 volt so uh, it may be 11 volt 12 volt and uh, some uh, for some uh, particular devices 9 volt uh, 5 volt this is this kind of voltage is required in many appliances like your laptop is also operating in certain dc voltage how much voltage in this laptop have you observed so those appliances which are directly operating on ac we no need to rectify it directly the ac signal can be utilized but uh, in case of dc wherever the appliances are operating in the dc we we need to convert the signal into dc that's why we require a specific charger for your electronic devices like mobile or laptop you are connecting so for that case particular charger is required 8.5 how much 19.5 volt 19.5 volt yeah 19.5 volt so Uh, so that's why we require a specific charger so the charger is nothing but it will have the rectifier so in the rectifier how we will convert this ac signal into dc signal when we uh, deal with the ac signal it must have some frequency some phase some amplitude these are the characteristics of your ac signal but when we consider the dc signal when we consider the dc voltage here the this will be the peak voltage b max will be represented okay and this will be maybe your minus of vm so if you con consider the voltage with respect to time but in case of dc signal if you represent the dc signal the dc signal will be having the frequency zero like suppose this is the 5 volt dc signal so here the frequency must be zero okay there is no question of your phase or uh, something only amplitude part we have to represent that is how much voltage that is also a fixed voltage okay so this ac signal need to be converted to this dc signal so how this rectifier will work like suppose we consider the um, half wave rectifier half wave rectifier so in the half wave rectifier usually we consider a diode okay suppose this is the load resistance rl and uh, this is the uh, applied actually this uh, applied voltage or the ac voltage is applied through a transformer what is the need of this transformer suppose this is the v input so we step apply up, yeah it may be step up or for the purpose of your step up or step down okay so uh, the as per the requirement of voltage how much voltage ac voltage your device can tolerate according to that you have to transform the ac voltage from one uh, amplitude to another so we will have the some input voltage let's say uh, this is v in dash suppose v in voltage here we apply it so this is the ac voltage we are applying okay 
this uh, to the diode. So AC means this is the alternating voltage we are applying. So according to this, the current will flow. So now you just measure the voltage across this load. Let's say this is the output voltage V0. So when we analyze this half wave rectifier circuit, when we analyze this rectifier circuit, so let's say this is the input voltage we applied. Suppose this is your B input, okay. This is the max value. <clears throat> this is the reference zero axis. Let's say this is the time T small T1. This is the time small T2, okay. So overall this time period is your, suppose this is the time period capital T. So uh, in this case, we just uh, analyze the circuit. So here we will from 0 to T1, like from when the uh, duration is from 0 to T1, okay, from 0 to T1, we are applying a positive voltage, like your signal is from 0 to 1, 2, 3, like B max, then again it will reduce up to 0. So this, this is the positive half cycle of this AC signal. So from 0 to T1, we are applying a positive voltage to this diode. So here we have uh, not written anything above the diode. That means it indicates that it is a ideal condition, ideal diode we have considered. So for the ideal diode, we just apply the positive voltage and it will be switching on or it will be behaves like a short circuit switch, on switch or short circuit uh, equivalent. So this diode will be behaving like a short circuit and will have a circuit equivalent circuit like this. So here we have applied the B in, which is the AC voltage from plus plus minus. Okay. So what will be the output voltage B naught? If you uh, calculate the V naught. So here the current is flowing. Let's say current is your I. So obviously your V in is equal to V out here whatever the voltage we have applied at the input that will be appear across the output. So for this particular uh, particular part, 0 to T1, we are applying whatever the applied input voltage that will be appear across the output. The same, this is the, let's say this is your V out. So this is whatever V in we have applied that V out, same V out we have obtained, okay? Then come to the next part of this from T1 to T2. From T1 to T2, we have applied the voltage which is negative in uh, your polarity. Like you from 0 to minus 1, minus 2, like up to minus V max, then you will be again 0. So this is called the this is called the positive half cycle. This is called the positive half cycle. <clears throat> and from T1 to T2, if you consider from T1 to T2, that is your negative half cycle. From negative half cycle, we are applying the negative voltage. So when we apply the negative voltage, we are getting uh, the uh, in the diode P side. This is the P side of the diode. This is the N side of the diode. So when we are applying the negative voltage to this circuit, that means in your circuit, we are applying, this is the diode. So we are applying minus plus V in, just the reverse polarity, okay? Here it is plus minus V in we are applying. Here it is uh, negative to positive V in we are applying and this is the load we are connecting. So the load we are connecting here RL. So what will happen? This neg uh, negative to positive or reverse polarity we have just applied. So in for the reverse polarity, the diode will be reverse biased, it will be reverse biased so for the reverse bias, we replace the diode by the short circuit equivalent uh, by, uh, so for the short, uh, so not for the short circuit, open circuit equivalent. So this diode will be just like a, we have like a open circuit. So this is the load RN and this is the applied voltage V in. So as there is a open circuit, so the current will not move towards the load. So obviously the whatever the voltage we measure at the output side, this V naught will be equal to zero because there is no current current across the load will be zero so obviously voltage drop across the load is zero so for this 
negative half cycle we are getting zero volt from zero to, from this t1 to t2 we are getting zero volt again positive half cycle is coming so for the positive half cycle we are getting the same input voltage for negative half cycle we are getting the zero in this way we get a waveform at the output when we connect the diode in this uh, as a rectifier, half wave rectifier circuit. So is it a DC voltage? Can anybody say? No, 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 because it is also having no, some frequency. Okay, it is also having some frequency. So initially the signal was in this way we are having the signal. Now we are having a signal which is just like in this way. So this is also not a pure DC signal. So we can say this signal is a bidirectional signal. Bidirectional signal. And it is a unidirectional signal. So this half wave rectifier just convert the bidirectional signal into your unidirectional signal. It is not the AC. If you consider this is also just a repeating waveform like from this to this, the same time period is there also. Here also the same time period is there. The signal is repeating, just the, just the shape of the signal gets changed. So this is not a DC signal. This is a uh, this is called a pulsating DC. Pulsating DC signal means unidirectional signal. Okay, so now we have to uh, use some technique for converting this pulsating DC signal into pure DC signal. So for that case, we have to consider some filtering effect, some filter you have to connect. Okay, some filter you have to connect. So, uh, so filter, how the filtering will uh, affect that we'll discuss. Mathematically also you have to just uh, find the effect of the, uh, when we apply a filter. Filter means here, here we have to uh, use a capacitor. Capacitor filter you can use or uh, RC, LC filter you can use, CLC filter you can use. So any type of filter we can use for that uh, rectification purpose. So where it will uh, filter out the AC content of the signal. Okay, so this is just uh, the basic operation of a half wave rectifier circuit. So here you have considered the ideal diode condition. Okay, if you consider a silicon diode, can you say what will be the uh, difference in the waveform? If you consider the silicon the diode, will be a little less. Yeah, the voltage will be a little less. Okay, like suppose this is the uh, input waveform. Okay, if you apply a silicon diode, so the output what we will get that will be just uh, in the silicon diode the voltage drop across the diode the new voltage is 0 0.7 volt. Okay, so until and unless the diode will not get get the uh, 0 0.7 volt voltage, the diode will not start conducting. Okay, so from zero to let's say this is your T1 and this is your T2. So from this zero, uh, the output we are not getting any starting from the zero because it will take some time for the up to 0 0.7 volt. Up to when we get the G, suppose this is the 0 0.7 volt. Okay, so up to this duration, the diode will not conduct. So as the diode will not conduct means output voltage will also zero. So after 0 0.7 volt, the diode start conducting. And for that case, we will get the output voltage. And output voltage also, it is little bit less than the whatever the input Vmax is there. This is the Vmax Vm is there. So the peak of that voltage will be Vm minus 0 0.7. Vm minus 0 0.7 and again it will be ending just before T1 when the value is below 0 0.7. So for this voltage, let's see this is it. So for this case it is just, uh, let me draw it properly. So if it is the 0 0.7 line, okay. So up to this point it will not come Likewise here also up to this point it will not conduct. So from this point to this point it will conduct and the peak will be Vm minus 0 0.7. So if it is a silicon diode we will get a graph like this and in the negative half cycle from T1 to T2 throughout the reverse biasing the diode will not conduct so the uh, voltage across the output will be zero. 
So we'll get the graph like this. Okay. <clears throat> If it is a silicon diode, if it is a germanium diode, this will be 0.3 volt. This is only the difference. Okay, so this is the uh, half of the working of a half of rectifier circuit. So uh, in the next class, we will discuss if you connect a capacitor or a connector filter circuit, how it will be rectified. Then we have to evaluate some parameters. So we have to check the efficiency of the rectifier. Then uh, what will be the ripple factor of that amplifier? Sorry, not amplifier, rectifier. So ripple factor, form factor. There are various parameters involved in this rectifier for evaluation it's of its uh, operation. How it operates, that evaluation will be done. Okay. So we will derive some derivations are there. So we will derive that parameters. Then we switch over towards the full rectifier circuit. So we have to see the efficiency of your rectifier. How much efficiency is there? Yes. And can you please explain in case of silicon diode why will be the peak less somewhat? <clears throat> in case of silicon diode, when we consider the silicon diode in the forward biased condition, suppose uh, whatever the diode in the forward biased condition in the ideal case, we are just replacing the diode by a short circuit equivalent. Okay, we assume that there will be no drop of voltage across the diode in case of ideal condition. But in case of silicon, if you consider a silicon diode, minimum 0.7 volt is uh, required to overcome the potential barrier. So that in case of forward biasing of the silicon diode, it will be replaced by a 0.7 volt voltage uh, voltage source as in place of your that uh, diode. And this will be your load and this will be your input voltage be in whatever we have applied. Okay. So this will be the equivalent circuit in case of your uh, positive half cycle. During the positive half cycle, this will be the circuit equivalent. So what will be the V0 here or output voltage V0 here? So if you apply the KVL, this will be V in minus 0 0.7 volt is uh, minus V0 equal to 0. So this output V0 will be nothing but your V in minus 0 0.7 volt. Okay, so what will be the maximum of V in is Vm. Okay, whatever maximum of V in is your Vm. So it, uh, peak of this output will also Vm minus 0.7 volt. Okay, Vm minus 0.7 volt. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So uh, if you if you take a germanium diode, there you have to consider 0 0.3 volt. So there the peak will be just below this uh, B, you know, whatever the peak of the input below 0.3 volt. Okay, so in the next class we will discuss about the uh, derivation of all the parameters. So what will be the efficiency of the rectifier? Then uh, how much AC content is there in the rectifier without filtering and how the AC content is reducing with filtering. All this we will discuss in the next class. So tomorrow we will have lab class. So Monday at 2.30 to 3.30 we can take the class now. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Monday we will take. Otherwise, uh, we will let be. Actually, yeah? can you please uh, take the extra class after 26th because of NCC? It, I mean, we are losing a lot of uh, academic mm -hmm. classes. So if okay. extra classes will be added.